still reeling from the twist at the end of Spyfall Part 1? Yep, me too. But in addition to the Master's monumental return, there were lots of other little easter eggs and references to the past in this episode. Here are six things you may have missed. Number one, an unexpected cameo from the season 11 to 13 font. Now, I think it's fair to say that the general consensus on the font used for location establishing captions in Spyfall is much, much nicer than the one used in Resolution. But what you might not realise is that it's a variant of a font used in the show before. Yes, as confirmed by some of the biggest Doctor Who font experts, this is Futura Extra Bold, previously seen in the Pertwee and Tom Baker eras, specifically from the Time Warrior up to the Seeds of Doom. Number two, Unit and Torchwood getting name dropped. This was a pretty easy one to spot, but still worth repeating here, I think. The disbanding of Unit had previously been a plot point in Resolution, but this is the first time that Torchwood has received a mention in the Chibnall era. Of course, Chris Chibnall was head writer on Torchwood seasons 1 and 2, so him dropping it in here should come as no great surprise. None of this bodes too well for the future of either organisation. Unless behind the scenes there's a much bigger plan to bring one, or even both, of them back. The Doctor also refers to an extraterrestrial attack at Government Communications Headquarters, aka GCHQ, which, of course, was depicted in Resolution. Number 3. A reference to the American 2020 presidential campaign. At first, you might be thinking, what's this got to do with Doctor Who? But hang on in there. Series 11, Episode 4, Arachnids in the UK, introduced us to American businessman and presidential candidate Jack Robertson. And ever since, there has been speculation that he could return in a future story, perhaps even having risen to power. In Spyfall, coverage of the 2020 campaign is listed as one of the credits for bogus journalist Sophia Avzal, aka Yasmin Khan, on Daniel Barton's phone. And at this stage, it's unclear whether this reference is building to something bigger, or if it's just a bit of extra world building. Either way, it was nice of them to include it. Number 4. References to Old Masters Upon rewatch, the episode invites its viewers to pick up on some of the hints to O's true identity. The most obvious of these is when he implores the Doctor to look for the Spy Master. There's also his knowledge of the Doctor's past, most notably his shelf all about her, but it's also the fact that he knows she used to be a man and seems to know where she's from. With respect to the Master's own past, there was one massive callback in the form of the Tissue Compression Eliminator, aka the TCE, the Master's trademark weapon used throughout the classic era, and appearing in revived Doctor Who for the first time here. But fans have also picked up on a more oblique reference when O says of Barton that there are thousands of photos of him online at all ages. If he's not human, that's one very impressive legend he's put together. Of course, fabricating a fake identity is exactly what the Master did in order to establish himself as Harold Saxon, as shown in the Series 3 finale. And it's less of an easter egg as such, more of a parallel, but I couldn't help noticing that the Master and Planes have featured together in stories quite a bit before, namely in Time Flight, Death in Heaven, and The Magician's Apprentice. Number 5. References to the Cybermen Just a quick one here, and I might just be clutching at straws, but the episode's dialogue featured the word upgrade, with reference to the Doctor's upgrade from man to woman, and Yaz spoke of cyberbullying when interviewing Daniel Barton. More broadly, the episode features numerous instances of tech going wrong, such as Yaz's dad's Alexa, and the car Satnav getting hacked. We know the Cybermen are returning at some point later in the series, so could all these references be connected to them? And, as some have suggested, perhaps the overarching theme of the series will have something to do with the misuse and or pitfalls of modern technology. Number 6. Reused Locations Although the episode features lots of very nice, impressive foreign landscapes thanks to another shoot in South Africa, it's also used some locations that were much closer to home, a few of which the long-time viewer might recognise from previous stories. In the opening montage, Moscow was represented by Butte Street in Cardiff, which has been used numerous times over the years, most recently, very, very briefly in Rosa, but also more substantially in World Enough in Time, The Pyramid at the End of the World, and Deep Breath, amongst others. 
the property used for the actual safe house appears to be the same one that was used in Series 8 in The Caretaker, as the site of one of the Scovox Blitz's attacks. The foyer of Brangwyn Hall in Swansea is perhaps the most recognisable reused location, seen here as the entrance to MI6, but previously used as part of the library in Science in the Library and Forest of the Dead, and also as the museum in The Big Bang. Meanwhile, the A4232 Road and Tunnel in Cardiff Bay were used for the car chase, following appearances in The Runaway Bride and Planet of the Dead. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something new from it, perhaps. I'm no master or spy master myself, so if there's anything that I've said that's wrong or any gaps in what I've said, or if there's anything that I've missed out that you thought I should have put in this video, please do not hesitate to head to the comment section and get your voice heard and we can continue the discussion down there. Please subscribe if you're new and I will see you very soon for some more Series 12 themed videos, including a review of Spyfall Parts 1 and 2 at some point next week. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.